yes, we are here and we are of service. And there is uh, many of the collectives that you usually connect with here today uh, to be able to give you their perspective from their um, different dimensions of observations, their different knowledge and history uh, that they have observed from of this planet and of these uh, of all beings that are here on this planet from their other lives uh, within this planet and off this planet. So we want to say that we are we are aware of your history very much so we are very aware of the nature of humanity and all beings that are inhabiting on this planet at this time and all the other times um, that other beings have been here so we're not trying to brag we're trying to say that we're hooked up and connected uh, if you will use it uh, if you will be so kind to allow us to use uh, slang and hip phrases uh, to be able to make you know that we are um, with our own personalities and we can try to connect in with you with our, uh, our humor and wanting you to feel at ease uh, with our conversations. Um, we know that some people feel awkward that we are connecting in with you uh, from a higher dimensional purpose. Uh, some people feel that we are removed of emotions and we are not compassionate. And we say that uh, we are doing the best we can to be able to help and advise and guide you uh, with our perspective. And of course, you all have free will to make choices of how you want to play out the rest of your 3D lives. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. We have been preparing you for this conversation. Good. Um, I don't. I don't know where to start with questions. Uh, I just have a sense that there's a lot of pain and confusion worldwide because of what's happening, and I would love to hear from your perspective what is going on with people, why they're reacting different ways, and how they can be consoled. Because at, at this point, I, I am not sure. Many are being triggered because they're noticing the changes within their bodies and energetically frequencies that are on this planet and have been ramped up. And we have been trying to get your attention to be able to tell you and advise you and prepare you and warn you for these events. We know that humanity is most often uh, stubborn to learn and uh, hear new things and they are so addicted to their routines that they will refuse to take advice from others. Um, they follow the, the stream. As we were saying to you the last time we talked to you, they like to go with the flow and follow the leader um, and to not make any new waves and therefore not be able to stop and think for themselves and notice their environments. Uh, we want to say this literally because if you have not noticed, the planet is decaying and eroding away. This is not an accident or a constant. Uh, uh, a, this is not an accident or just a mere coincidence that there is extreme weather on this planet at this time. Some, many uh, people uh, want to feel victimized by uh, soon and other man-made instruments of weather. They do not want to consider this as Gaia. They do not want to consider this is the planet speaking to you right now because many uh, still feel like uh, they need to be victimized by humanity because they still haven't done their inner work. And so they are seeing the tragedies of the floods, the earthquakes, all of the natural disasters that have been amplified to stop and get your attention. For you to understand, this is not going to be a inhabitable planet for much longer. Do you see now? Do you feel it now? Because we have been trying to get your attention for a long time. And this is the last scene. This is the last stage. This is the last step. And it's not going to stop. You understand that, right? 
you understand that it doesn't get better on this planet, right? Understand the cycle here. Notice it. The planet is screaming and you're oblivious. That is what is happening to people. That is what is triggering people. That is what is keeping people distracted. And if you could understand that this is a cycle that we are very much aware of, we have tried to awaken many to the bigger picture, although many will refuse to see it, think that they can use their mindsets to create a different reality, you keep doing that and see how well that works out for you. You keep doing that. Because while you are doing that and ignoring what's right in front of you and around you, hopefully that keeps you at least high vibrational while you focus on other things. Because many are still focusing on fear, worry, being afraid. There is so much that people are still distracting themselves. When you actually understand what is happening to Gaia, then you can understand and prepare yourself, understand that this is exit points for many to be able to continue on doing other things. This is not the death of anything. This is about to be an evolutionary, an evolutionary step for all. So those people who want to be victimized by Gaia's choice of a reincarnation into a different vessel, that is your free will. That is the hardest option that you could have. And for some, that is their chosen choice, their life contract to experience that. There's very many purposeful reasons why people are still sleeping. And then they are find themselves on the old earth. This is for them to have those experiences, to understand the consequences of destroying planets after planets after planets. Many don't like to feel that they are going to be held responsible for their other lifetime choices, but that is going to be the case for many. Could you go into more detail about that? Well, as you know, you have uh, free will and other planets as well. As you know, different species and different collectives have different agendas and different purposes and approaches to how they treat uh, other planets, how they treat other species. And so there has been so much conflict and war and so much ignorance and arrogance and without much compassion and consideration for others that we are left now to focus on learning lessons and consequences for those and we have created the opportunity for those who have profound personal experiences on the old earth for them to learn and feel victimized and terrorized. This is strange, you may say. It is not a punishment, it is a learning lesson. And as you know, learning can be painful but it is important so you never do it again. Yes, thank you. We are um, obviously wanting to help, but it just feels like people are so triggered. They, they don't want to hear it. They don't want to listen. They don't want the bigger perspective. We just, we just want to help them. We don't know what to do. Um, at, at this point, what should we be spending our time focusing on. We're trying to nurture the ones who are seeking the bigger perspective, but they're being drowned out by the ones who are screaming in distress. Yes, those ones who are still holding lots of pain are the ones with the biggest screams. Those ones who have done their inner work have found that balance and neutrality and holding high vibrational space for all. So it is the obvious squeaky wheels that are still stuck and confused because they've been given so much disinformation in the past that they feel this belief system that they have heard and then their guides, their dreams and their physical bodies are saying something quite different. And so they are disconnected. They still don't know which way to turn. They can't trust others, let alone themselves. They don't know why things are happening to them. 
that will be obvious in time. We cannot waken all who need to be awoken. And we understand that you feel like you're an ostrich farmer with all of these ostriches with their heads in the sand. And we say, is this an analogy that you can understand what we are referring to? Yes, I most definitely do. It, it really hurts to see. And I can imagine it hurts all the time that you all have put in also. Um, it just hurts my heart. It hurts you, Erin, because you have been wanting to find the truth for a long time. You have trusted others and been given this information. And when you were confused and dazed with your spiritual journey of your awakening, you were just you were given more disinformation. You already were coming out of one set of disinformational systems to then find yourself in the spirituality realm of more disinformation. And so you thought that you had jumped out of one frying pan of oil, and then you thought you were free, and you landed into another giant frying pan of oil. But it just looks different. Say one is sunflower oil and the other one's olive. But you understand that you thought that freedom of jumping out of the control systems and hidden agendas that is uh, based on humanities, all of humanity's societies, when you felt that freedom, you felt liberated and excited and you wanted more. And then you landed into the pot of spirituality. And as you know, there is a hidden, many hidden other control systems, other collectives information and other agendas, all in that mix. And so now that you have found uh, our information, which has deeply resonated with you, it has deeply activated you and we are recommending that you still listen back to the other sessions because it gives you the fuller picture of all that you are still seeking for. Now you're wanting to help others because you see how much pollution, shall we say, and how much disinformation in this frying pan of spirituality there is. You are trying to alert others and your agenda yourself to help others comes from you being so upset and frustrated that you didn't know uh, that spirituality has also been taken over um, and controlled in some regards. And the most popular gurus and influences that you have stumbled across have their own agenda and it's not financial. Most definitely. From your perspective, what else needs to be heard by those who are going to listen to the session what do they need to hear that's it that we love you and that it is close and we don't want you to go into fear we want you to focus on the next step afterwards and to know that we are here we've always been here for you Thank you. Um, there was the most popular question today on the Facebook group was, what is the Galactic Federation? Who's in it? Um, is that different from the Galactic Alliance? And it literally hurts me to ask that question, but it blew up um so do you have a response on that it is not a coincidence that you have asked us this now after what we had just said uh so you know that lab that uh, humans love labels and that they want to put things into boxes and one human's labeling system is different from another human's labeling system and it's really you're labeling the same thing. Uh, it is um, anyone that is any light worker or influencer or guru that is saying something is bad, can't be trusted. Um, they are distracting you uh, with their egos. Uh, we will say to you that there is no bad. It is lessons and experiences and that for anyone to label high dimensional beings as in quotation marks bad is simply arrogant 
because and ignorant to to life purposes, experiences, contracts, and duality, uh, they have got completely no bigger perspective of what is happening and the purpose of all. You cannot judge uh, any. You you have to merely understand all. So for your labeling system, throw it out the window. It is a distraction. Uh, if you want to classify a certain species as bad, well, then find out what is their purpose and lessons and, and what are they trying to teach you and show you. You understand it so much better and different. You are still trying to have an a, a, a exclusion. Humans against other races. We're victims to this. We're victims to that. You're actually all one. You're all part of source. Believe it or not, you're all still family. And this may feel uncomfortable to know that, but where do you think they have been created? And for those people who love to use the word God, do you think that God created mistakes? Do you think God then allowed things to get out of hand if there wasn't a good purpose and uh, significance for the learning and lessons? You have to have duality to find the balance. And as we say, when you all step up into different lifetimes and you get your scripts and your roles, sometimes you may be the funny one. Sometimes you may be the, the diva. Sometimes you may be the agitator. Sometimes you may be the peacemaker. Whatever your role is that you want to identify experiencing the purpose of your life missions, you step up to that because you want to experience that. Saying that someone or something or some uh, collectives or whomever is evil or bad um, shows your lack of spiritual maturity. So does this answer your question? Yes, it does. I think that's exactly what needs to be heard. So yes, it does. Um, the worldwide natural disasters that are on high speed, um, is it right to assume that these will continue and escalate? Absolutely. It will just get more and more widespread. It is not stopping and it will not stop. Is there anything that you think we need to know about the actual shift itself that we haven't covered recently? It is happening. It is happening. It is just going to speed up and continue as it needs to. And this may feel uncomfortable for others to know, but it, look around you. Don't trust us then. Look around you. Look. See notice more just your more than just your street more than just your community more than just your town and your city more than just your country look at the planet include yourself as being part of the planet those people who think that everything is sunshine and roses yes wonderful you will still have some of those days Absolutely, you will enjoy them. We highly recommend it. I have absolute faith uh, that we are protected, that everything that we are experiencing now is meant to be a lesson to be learned, whatever lesson that is. And a lot of my focus right now is, even though the shift is a big scary aspect, not to think about, like, as you said, as if someone was giving birth, don't think about that last push, which was a great analogy yet again for me guys, to, to think about what's beyond it. And I just, I really hope that everyone can use a similar strategy. It doesn't have to be that one, but just to not go into fear would be a, a really big accomplishment. Yes, and uh, right now, don't focus on the push. Focus now on the 
the peace and serenity that you can find uh, going within, seeing the beauty that is still here, the connections that you have with others that is still uh, important, and the connection that you have with yourself, uh, noticing anything that comes up for you and releasing it, acknowledging it, see what your triggers are, and find out how you can master it more. Everything is still opportunities for you to grow. Absolutely. Um, body changes, we've talked about a few times. Um, I just want to ask this question. Is there anything else that we can do to process the incoming energies better uh, besides drinking lots of water, uh, walking barefoot on the ground, sleeping when we're tired? Is, is there anything that we need to hear on that also? If you're not able to sleep, don't panic. Um, relax into it, relax into what your body is doing. Don't use your mind to dictate and force your body to do things it is not wanting to do. Be kind to your body. Listen to your body and notice your body and stop going into fear about your body. It will be feeling different that will give many people an opportunity to panic and worry and think that there's something wrong with them once again because that's what they're designed to do those minds are worry warts what they want to say just relax just relax into this the more you are resisting the more you are lowering your vibration trust your body knows more than you trust your body knows exactly what to do and it is doing what it needs to do using your worry and fear to freak out about your new routine with your body whether it's more sleep or less sleep whether it's more food or less food whether it is changing routines allow go with the flow of it resistance is not your friend to anything when we are encouraging you to expand your consciousness and expand your energy field and to be able to be upgraded Wonderful. Um, this was a, this will, will be a random question. Um, the mantid, mantids, um, we have, I don't know if I've ever spoken to them. Um, they've been brought up in our private group a lot recently. Um, we were just sensing that they were a huge part of this pie and, and helping us quite a bit with the shift. And I don't know if I have a question. I just wanted to say thank you. Hmm. Well, they do want to come in. They have prompted a few to be able to acknowledge uh, that they have some words to say to be able to support humanity at this time because they are the ones that often get seen um, in what you would call abductions. And when those people who have woken up with... Um, they wake up and they get a sense of being paralyzed and they get a sense that there is someone standing over their bodies. Um, we want to say that the mantids, they are gentle, they are nurturing, they are healing, they have hopes to be able to assist and help humanity, but they also know that when you see them, freak out because they're so large in size and because they look so foreign they do look like large praying mantises more than human size and so this is important that they have allowed and let uh, their star seeds come in uh, not just as um not just as little insects uh, the little insects are very, very good. We are saying that they are, they are healers to nature. They are of service to this planet as they are experiencing things. And they are wanting, they're coming out more prevalent now, the saying, because they're wanting people to get used to seeing different being bodies. And this is happening through, this is very common now that people are noticing insects 
and they are getting get a little bit to see something that's so small and so strange and they're learning how to overcome their fears of course so this is all helping them if you don't have fear over insects you're not going to notice them as much but this is an opportunity for many to see uh, we want to see cicadas, we want to say uh, flying insects, we wanting to say a whole lot. It is about um, having more of a personal interaction and connection with them, just for you to, to be aware and notice others. Um, this, we keep them small so you do not feel uh, that you are inferior. And so this is partly to support your ego so you don't get too triggered. Humans really do like the idea that they are the biggest beings here. And so this is something that we try to not uh, make you deal with too much because you already are so disempowered. Uh, so we are saying that we have been helping humanity for a long time. We are... Uh, are of service to many collectives and we have been helping. We understand that some people have seen us when they have been, in your quotation marks, abducted um, because we are very curious of the body. We're wanting to assist and help because we heal the body. We, have, we were working um, on many planets to design humanoid bodies to be able to be of assistance to explore and experience all of the environmental uh, yeah, yeah, situations uh, of the each planet. So we are um, curious by nature, but we also want to heal and we want to fix. Think of us as your body mechanic, and we are very busy. And when we have done sessions, we often come in and help your collectives with this healing. Uh, we are great friends uh, to many uh, collectives. Uh, we want to support all. Um, we have had our own history, we have had our own um, evolutionary growth and conflict and experiences to learn and grow from, as you would expect from all collectives and all different species, as they're learning to, to stand on their own two feet, how you say, and to be able to explore the dynamics of each cultures and each, uh, what each collective wants to learn and grow from. Um, we do want to say to those people who are scared of us, um, we are sorry we scared you. We did not mean to do that as we were healing your bodies. Um, but you needed to see us to know that there was much more than just what your physical reality allows you to see. And so, again, we are of service. We have never done anything to intentionally harm those. And if you have got a bad memory of us or an experience, uh, we would like you to know that you will see things from a bigger perspective uh, when you see. This is uh, the best that we can prove to you right now. And of course, we also know that we want to say a big hello to all of those who have connected in with us, who know our hearts, who know our attentions and our agendas. And we say that we love you and we're always of service. Don't be shy to ask for us because we are so willing, so willing, so willing to help you all. And we are grateful for this opportunity to be able to connect in and, and thank those who are able to accept our physicalities and our help uh, because we love to be of service. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any are there any other collectives besides? Um, the Mantid Collectives, I'm sorry if I said that wrong, um, that haven't spoken to us recently, that have anything that they would like to share or um, give a, their insight on? Hmm. Here is one, they do not want to be named, um, but they are saying that they are also here of assistance and they represent a different collective uh, that what one could perceive as a darker uh, agenda. And they again saying that uh, they have been learning great things and observing, uh, not because they want to be warlords in the future, but because they are also learning and growing from the, the 
consequences of behaviors and the results of how things will uh, fold, outfold, and play, unfold. And so they have been learning vicariously. Uh, they could see that their collective could start growing in numbers and start uh, following in the footsteps of others. And they realized we would prefer not to be of carnage. Um, and, and we are learning. Uh, and this is uh, fantastic because it's like we are uh, exploring these uh, ex life experiences to learn and grow from. If you will, they are having imprinted lives from these experiences to be uh, brought into their collective's consciousness so then they can have uh, choices that are less traumatic uh, for all involved. And they would just like to pop in and say hello. And they energetically, they give us, uh, they would like to give all uh, confirmation that the, you know, the, those other collectives that do not speak, who do have part of the tendency to go into the more harsher, um, denser emotions and reactions and be more ruthless with their the choices of the ways that they like to live, and we want to say it may seem very barbaric um, and very ruthless and brutal. Uh, they are wanting to say that they are still uh, kind in their connections with their own. And so they're not wanting to lose that uh, sensitivity and connection to others. They're actually realizing that uh, conflict and competition within their own collectives uh, are not for the embitterment of their own growth. And so they are using all of the lessons on this planet uh, to be able to use for their own collective experiences so they do not, in the future, wreak havoc and become uh, a problem. And so they are very grateful for all of the lessons played out because now they do not have to uh, be that way. Um, so we wanted you to know to be able to give you the reassurances that many like that are learning uh, all of the experiences that are happening, not just those who are here on the ground at the moment and who have been here. So if that helps and comforts you, uh, we say uh, you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, it seems like a big learning experience for lots of collectives. So that's wonderful. Absolutely. Because it has gone on so much and it's so off path, shall we say, from its original plan, um, and it's so dense and there's so much going on, uh, it is a, a teach. We want to say this is why the planet is called uh, this planet of uh, schools, it's a school planet, it's lessons, you're learning, we are learning just as much as you are learning, uh, we are seeing things from the biggest perspective uh, that we can attain from our own conscious expansion, uh, so this is a great school for learning for many, many reasons, not just those who are having lifetimes here. Definitely, thank you, and thank you to all the collectives uh, for assisting us and everything and everyone, every every planet, every living, living being, I'm sorry, um, on the planet and helping us with our exit strategy. Yeah, well, we are doing this uh, also for our own interests because we know that the lessons here ripple out into great timelines and experiences. And this is uh, purposeful and useful and significant to us. And so this is why we're so diligent. This is why we want to help. Um, so if that sounds selfish, we didn't mean to do that. We are, of course, wanting to help you all because you are all part of us as well. We're all, we're all one when we all return back to source and share our collective experiences. So we are wanting this to be um, as vast an experience as it's possible uh, to be able to learn all scenarios here. It is significant. And we say that that one word significant uh, really is an underrated word because what we are saying when we say significant, it is gigantic. 
Um, and we could list thousands of reasons why this is significant. So pardon us for trying to summarize and simplify uh, all the ins and outs and the goings on um, that is happening at your time. We do understand that the veil still is, while it's thinning, it is still thick uh, for people to comprehend the bigger, bigger, bigger picture. You are sensing more yourselves that the veil is thinning on yourself. So you're starting to remember past lifetimes or other lifetimes, shall we say. You're starting to really heal all of that inner work, but the veil is thick in terms of the bigger outside this planet details. And that is purposeful so you can still focus on yourselves and your inner work and learning all of the 3D lessons you need to learn here. Wonderful, absolutely. Um, that is. We do oh, want to go ahead. This is, uh, this is uh, what we were saying about the ostriches. Uh, those ostriches that can't hear about the off planet bigger perspective and consequences and what's happening, uh, they uh, have their head stuck in the sand or the mud uh, to focus on themselves and their 3D. Uh, it's only those ostriches who have mastered the 3D that are willing to hear this. So while you're frustrated because you're trying to help support those who see and hear our bigger messages, those people who are still struggling are still needing to master their own 3D. And so they're almost being blocked from hearing this. They, they will try to listen to it, but it will not be absorbed in because they just simply are not ready. They haven't reached that. Um, they haven't reached the point where their teams are like, yep, they can focus on um, bigger stuff now. Those who are still struggling with the 3D are still, still in the 3D school. And those who have uh, mastered enough of their 3D to now get this privy information, as we've always said all along, uh, only the people who are ready to hear this information will. I understand. I understand what you're saying. Um, but giving those who are still stuck in 3D compassion and love is probably your best advice that we can give you at this time. Yes, that's great advice. Thank you. Um, well, I don't have any other questions unless you have any closing comments. Uh, we love you. Uh, we are you. We want to support you. And we are doing everything we can to make this transition smooth as possible. And the lessons that have been learned and the experiences that have been gained this year alone have been profound. And this is going to make for such great educational experiences uh, for future. It is so significant and we can't wait for you to see why. Me neither. Thank you so much.